<laughs> Welcome in. I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50, where we talk everything beauty, fitness, and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend it with me. You guys know I just get thrilled about that. Before we start on the topic today, which is a Q&A of the last video I did, <laughs> which outlined my enormous struggle to lose fat and get fit. This is the q and I want to point out something in the background that you guys can see. I'm going to turn my camera just a little bit. You see that kayak in my living room? <laughs> that is an origami kayak. That sucker folds down to a little two by three box. I'm not kidding you. And it weighs 22 pounds. I am so excited about that. I haven't taken it on its maiden voyage yet. I got to learn how to fold it and unfold it a few more times, but is that a thing of beauty or what? I'm so excited about that because it's going to open up a whole realm of possibilities for me. I'll be able to kayak a lot easier than with my 55 pound, 11 foot long kayak that I have to get a rack for and the whole thing. So anyway, little personal story there. I want to start in by saying good morning to all the people from around who have joined us. I saw someone from Israel. I'm so, that just tickles me. Ohio, Utah. Um, I saw Southern California, Woodlands, Texas. Hello, hello. Um, Beth, hi, Beth. So nice. It's always so nice to see. Beth is one of the gals, good friend that worked with me on the book club. We just had the greatest time, um, us four gals. Let's see, Georgia, uh, Illinois, good afternoon. Hey, Colorado Springs, California, another Colorado, Raleigh, North Carolina. I love the Carolinas. Of course, I lived in South Carolina. United Arab Emirates. Oh, that's so excited. <laughs> Exciting for me. I'm so glad you're here. We're going to dive in today. And the reason I'm doing this live is because when I posted that video last Sunday, I had so many questions. And a lot of the questions were the same questions. And what we know, those of us who create content, we pretty much know that if one person leaves a comment, about a hundred other people are thinking the same thing. They just don't leave a comment. So that told me that there was a lot of people that had details that they wanted clarified. And that's what I'm going to try to do today. Before we get started, how many times have I said that now before we get started? I want to tell you, I am not, this is not medical advice. This is not medical advice. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a medical professional of any kind. Do your own research. All I'm sharing today is a whole bunch of opinions, my opinions, and you're going to hear them because I have tremendous opinions about this topic. This is probably one of my hot button topics. And you guys know that if you've been following me for a while, um, do your own research, please. This, these are my opinions and my experience. That's all I'm sharing today. I want to start with a quote by Robert Kennedy Jr. Now, this is not an endorsement for his candidacy. I'm not team red. I'm not team blue. I'm team humanity. Whatever team you're on, I support you. This was just good information, and I wrote it down. This is from an interview that he did just a couple of days ago on Dr. Drew. You can find it here on YouTube. It's really, really worth watching. So this is a comment that he made and I went, whoa, backed it up and I wrote it all down. We have a chronic disease epidemic affecting 65 to 70% of American children. Where's that coming from? How did autism go from one in 10,000 when we were kids, remember, to one in 30 today? What did food why did food allergies suddenly appear in 1989? Why did autoimmune diseases suddenly appear in 1989? Neurological disorders, rheumatoid arthritis, juvenile diabetes, I would add Hashimoto's. Why are Americans suddenly obese? What is it? These issues are the result of environmental toxins. And I'll tell you what, in my opinion, that's exactly right. And I want to start today again, I'm saying it again, by telling you guys, we live in a toxic environment from the air we breathe to the water, to the food supply, all the way down. We are fighting toxins that we are 
have never been exposed to before. And the U.S. is worse than most countries around the globe. You can go, those of you who are on a computer and you can pull up another tab right now, if you pull up another tab and type in images, public beach, 1960s, it is shocking and stunning what you'll see. What you'll see is how people used to look. And if you compare that to how we look today, it is so saddening because clearly there's something has gone wrong. When I look around today, particularly in the US, what I see is obesity everywhere. And the corporations or the corporatocracy that run this country will tell you that it's your fault. They'll blame and shame you and say, you apparently are slovenly and lazy. That's why you are carrying around extra, right? And what I will say to you is that that corporatocracy has created a food supply and a medical system that doesn't support humanity. It's not your fault. You are living in a toxic soup and your body is on overload just trying to keep you going because of all the toxins in our environment. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how do we combat this? Why is it so doggone hard to lose weight? when you're our age and compounded with all the toxins in our environment, it isn't our fault, but it is our responsibility to try to work around it. And that's what I find myself doing. I am aware of the toxins in our environment as I'm sure that you are too, because if you're here, you're aware. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what I've done. If you have questions, put them over in the chat in high caps, in all caps, so I'm able to identify them. Sometimes the chat goes really quickly. I'll try to get to all of them today, but I do have a list of the questions that were given down below in the last video I did last Sunday. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go through those. If you have additional questions, put them in caps over in there and I'll try to answer them. In addition, I think that Connie, the holistic nutritionist that I am working with. I think she's here in the chat today. I, I don't know if I have, if I can look for her, but I think she's here and she might be able to answer some questions that we have as well. So if you don't have another tab up, if you haven't Googled, since I said it, pictures of a public beach in 1960, make sure you do that sometime today. It's going to be eye opening. And the, the thing that makes me crazy about what's going on with health in the US today is that it's happened in such a manner a little bit at a time that we don't realize how mis how abused that we've been by our food supply by our corporate run medical system we don't realize it until we actually compare what it was like when we were kids and what it's like now i had lunch yesterday <clears throat> with the most fabulous woman. I had lunch with three ladies yesterday and myself. One of them was a nurse. This woman was incredible, extremely bright, nursing career for decades, clearly extremely learned in her profession at the administrative level, ran hospitals, just a brilliant woman. And her disdain with what is happening in the medical system right now is huge. It's just like mine. She is so disappointed as well as the coworkers that she worked with. So it's not the people, it's not the nurses, it's not the doctors, it's the system that really is keeping us sick. So although we didn't create it, we are left in the position of having to solve it. So hopefully today we're going to have a little bit of information on what I'm doing to kind of work around this toxic environment but on the back end, you know, we've got to start voting with our dollars and voting, you know, and speaking out. This toxic environment, we can't keep going. It's not, humanity cannot exist. And I'll tell you this story. I lived in Cuenca, Ecuador for a while. And Cuenca or Ecuador has much tighter restrictions on the types of pesticides that you can use in the food supply. I mean, it's much, much different than the US. You might not, not know this, but the US allows more pesticides, more chemicals and more toxins in our food supply than I think any, plant, any country on the planet. What would happen when I was living in Cuenca 
There's a huge expat population there. Someone would go back home to the U.S. for a month, eat the same, put on 20 pounds, be completely confused as to why, come back to Ecuador. A couple of months later, the weight falls off again. It's the toxins in our environment. It truly is. It's just, it's not your fault. I mean, we really are, are working in a rig system right now. So the first question that um, I had continually was coffee in the morning. <laughs> and I said that I was putting things in my coffee that was kicking me out of my intermittent fasting. You know, when you're intermittent fasting, you want to have a length of time. I'm doing, what am I doing? I'm doing 16-8. So 16 hours I'm fasting or no caloric intake. I drink a lot of water, get good sleep. So 16 hours, no caloric intake, eight hours is my, is my feeding window. Some people do 16, eight, some people do 18, six. It really just depends on what your comfort level is and, and what your goals are. I had mentioned that I was getting kicked out of ketosis or that was the opinion of myself and Connie, the holistic nutritionist I'm working with. And you guys said, well, what were you doing? Well, here, I thought I was doing something good for myself. What I was doing is I was making one cup of coffee with my heavy cream, my sweetener, sugar substitute and MCT oil. So heavy cream and MCT oil. My second cup of coffee, I was making it again with heavy cream, my sweetener, and collagen peptides. Both the MCT oil and the collagen peptides, I thought, oh, I'm doing such good things for my body. Well, guess what? Connie said, you know what? You might want to try without the MCT oil and the collagen peptides. And it may look on paper that that would not kick you out of ketosis or, or provide enough a calorie input to kick you out of ketosis. But in my case, that's what switched the gears. That's what solved the problem for me. So I eliminated all dairy from my diet, sadly. And if we'll talk about dairy in a minute, I know it's it sounds so tragic, but we'll get into that in a minute. So I took the heavy cream out of my coffee and what I substituted it with is nut pods. I tried so many different alternatives because I'll tell you what, you guys, coffee is like, it's, it's just the best part of my day. I get excited at night when I go to bed because I'm going to wake up and have my coffee. I go out on the patio, the dog and the cat are out there. I'm having my coffee. It's quiet. It's peaceful. It's a whole thing for me. So it's really important that I have a drink that I just look forward to and I just love and it's so yummy. I looked around, tried a whole bunch of different things. I finally settled on the nut pods, almond and coconut creamer. This is the French vanilla flavor. Now I have listed this in the description box down below. If you haven't seen this or haven't purchased it before, I am not saying that Amazon is the best place to buy this. My experience is that I can get it at Publix, which is my local grocery store, for a lower price than what's available on Amazon, but kind of do a price comparison because I just last week, these were two for your buy one, get one free. So you got two for the price of one. So look around if you want to try this. I have found it's very, very satisfying. In addition, as my sweetener, and if you're on my email newsletter list, you already know this because I talk about it all the time. If you're not, the link is in the description box down below. I send out a Sunday morning email newsletter. It's really quick, really fun. And I just share the cool things I found throughout the week. <clears throat> this is the Stevia sweetener from Sweet Leaf. This is my favorite sweetener, and I've tried a lot of them. This is the only one that just doesn't taste nasty. It actually tastes pretty good. So I'll put this and this in my coffee and then I'll, I have one of those little tiny immersion whiskers, you know, you know, blender, not whiskers like on your face, like a whisk. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll kind of foam up the coffee a little bit and pour it in my coffee. It's really, really good. Um, water filtration recommendations for shower head. I don't have one. I don't have one, but do some research and get back to us and let us know. So that's my solution for coffee. And let me tell you, my coffee is near and dear to my heart. 
And when I decided I was going to give up dairy because not only one, but two holistic nutritionists told me you want to, want to think about giving up dairy, that was my solution. So I hope that's helpful to the rest of you. Um, one of the things that Connie said to me, she's the holistic nutritionist that I am working with in the very beginning is she said, you know, we just want to start pulling levers. And I didn't understand what she meant by that at the time, but I do now. What she meant is this is such an inexact science to figure out why your body is not acting like you wish it would. In other words, burning fat for fuel, giving you the energy you need. And her point was you just need to start pulling levers. Like what happens when I do this? And what happens when I do this? And what happens when I do this? So this is leading me into the dairy discussion. I said this in the video, I'll say it now. Cheese was my spirit animal, honestly. My life really was made happier by cheese. And I not only had cheese every day, I had heavy cream in my coffee in the morning because I thought it was a good alternative to the chemical laden creamers out there with all the flavors. I thought the heavy cream was better. I had cheese every day. I had Greek yogurt every single night with my berries. I, I mean, I had dairy all throughout my day. And when, when Connie suggested that I give up dairy, and Connie wasn't the only one, Korea Health suggested it as well, I didn't want to hear it. And my attitude was when she said that, and she said it very kindly, very gently, was, okay, I'll do this for a month, maybe six weeks, and then I'm going right back on dairy because there's no way I'm going to live the rest of my life without dairy. What happened for me when I gave up dairy, and I'm not saying this is going to happen for anyone else, but I have heard quite a number of people say this was their result, is I lost probably eight or nine pounds right away. And here's the even weirder thing is that I didn't miss it at all. And as a matter of fact, when I think about dairy right now, particularly cheeses, it doesn't sound very appetizing to me. And I find that really curious because I have loved cheese all my life. One thing that I've read and one of the gals commented below the video I did on Sunday, and I don't know if this is true. Maybe Connie can um, chime in here if she knows the answer to this, but I have heard it before in a different way. This woman said that casein, which is an ingredient in cheese, is very, very inflammatory and it's very addictive, that it has an addictive quality, much like morphine. I have heard that before. That wasn't the only person. So I'm wondering if I was just in that cheese loop. You know how you can kind of get in the sugar loop where you have a little bit of sugar and then you want a little bit more and a little bit more. I'm wondering if that was me with the cheese loop, the dairy loop, that that casein was really kicking off an, an addictive quality in my body. So just food for thought. Again, I'm not a medical professional. I'm just sharing my experience. So that's the story with dairy. I don't miss it at all. I really don't. I do use butter and I do eat eggs, but I don't have any kind of heavy cream or cheese or yogurts or anything like that before. I use the Kite Hill brand for substitutes. Kite, K-I-T-E, like you fly up in the air. Hill, like mountains and hills. Kite Hill brand. And I found that I really like them. Okay, Pamela has a question. Um, can you talk a little bit about low carb ketosis and how your new glucose meter works, please? Yes, and I didn't bring it over and I'm sorry about that. I have the little Keto Mojo. It's about this big and it, what it has is it has strips that you use with it. You poke your finger with the little prick thing, just like you do to test your blood sugar if you're diabetic. And you um, put that blood on the strip and insert the strip into the little keto mojo, and it reads your glucose levels and your ketose or your ketone levels, I believe. If I'm misspeaking on that and someone knows the answer, pipe, pipe up. And I didn't want to get it at first. I really didn't because I thought, I don't want to learn another new thing. It's going to be complicated and hard. And it's just another, you know, pain in my butt. I don't want to do it. But I went ahead and got it, and it's really easy. 
And I used it a little, you know, quite a bit the first few weeks. And then I kind of figured out what I could do with my diet to keep my blood sugar where I wanted it to be and, and to throw off ketones. So I'll maybe check just every now and again. It's super easy. I don't think it's very expensive. It's like $50. Um, it's listed below the video I did on Sunday. I didn't list it below this one, but you can find it on Amazon. It's called Keto Mojo, M-O-J-O. And if you're really wanting to know about your ketones and your glucose, I think it's a very effective and pretty easy way to get a really quick, good answer on that. Okay, any other questions? Let's always, oh, as far as my low carb, you know, what I focus on now with my diet is protein. So I will focus on the proteins because I'm trying to get 130 grams of protein every day. Do I get there? No, no, not all the time. Simply because it's really, I just get full. It's hard for me to eat that many proteins. But you know what? Like I talked about in the video, I work on a, a program called Success Creep. I just get a little bit better all the time. I, you know, I got the goal down of eating or drinking the 80 ounces of water. I, I got that locked in. I got the no dairy locked in. I've got the, you know, the no sugar locked in. So I just keep plugging along and getting a little bit better. So when I'm thinking about my meals now, I generally have my first meal at 1 p.m. I don't eat anything after 8 p.m. at night. So my first meal is at 1 p.m. I don't have breakfast. And I will focus on proteins for my meal. In other words, right now I have some ground beef that I'm going to wrap in one of those egg wraps and that's going to give me my protein for my first meal. So I'll, I'll just focus on, and then I have some chicken that I'm going to cook in the air fryer, another protein. I'll throw a little bit of vegetables in. I don't really eat things like bread or rice or beans that much right now. If I'm out at a restaurant and it comes with the meal I ordered, I'll have a little bit, but it's nothing that I cook at home. And here is the point, getting back to my first comment about the fact that our environment has literally been decimated for living a healthy lifestyle. If you pull up images from public beaches in 1960s and you look at their, those people, they're gonna look skinny to you. They're gonna look so thin and they've got flat abs and they're not even trying and they're just thin by today's standards. And you know what those people weren't doing? They weren't intermittent fasting. They weren't not eating bread. They weren't not eating potatoes. They weren't worried about their ketone level or the glucose level. They were just eating and living. And you know, it's very telling that we can't do that today. That's what I want to get across is that the environment we're living in, the cards are stacked against us. And it infuriates me that instead of cleaning up our food supply and creating a healthcare system that really serves the health of patients, these corporatocracies shame and blame the population. Like all of a sudden we woke up and we're lazy and slovenly. That's not the case. We are drenched in chemicals, endocrine disruptors, microplastics. Go back and look at people in the 1960s. They weren't worried about what they ate. They just ate and they ate three squares a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Maybe had some fruit in the evening. We can't do that today because our entire environment is a toxic mess. So can we fix it right now? No, but we can certainly do things that are going to help keep us as healthy as possible until we put our feet down, we stomp on these politicians in the, in the control system and say, we're not doing this anymore. We're either gonna grow our own food in the backyard and get our meats from local ranchers or, or you know, the grocery stores can go out of business as far as I'm concerned. I'm just, <laughs> I'm fed up to here with the whole thing. All right, I'm gonna go on to the next question right here. Um, what did you do? Why did you cut out dairy? Because 
what I hear from both the nutritionists I've worked with is that it's just really inflammatory. And for me, that was the case. I think some people can eat it, some people can't. And if you're wondering about it, like I, I wasn't wondering, but I kind of got backed into it. <laughs> but now I realize that I don't need dairy in my life. And, you know, will I have dairy from time to time in the future? Yeah, probably once I get my body functioning better again. One thing that I do know is that as we get older, our body really wants to stay where it's at. It really finds a set point and wants to stay there. And when I talk about my weight loss journey, and it didn't start out as weight loss, it started out as I wanted to get stronger so I wouldn't fall down and break my hip. <laughs> and that's the beginning of the end. I didn't want to do that. But along the way, again, success creep. Not only am I getting stronger, did I want to get stronger, but then I decided I really want to look great, you know, and what I mean by that is I wanted to look fit and healthy and slender and not fluffy. Those are just my goals. They don't have to be your goals. I have goals on that. So it's just success creep a little bit at a time. Um, what did I change in my intermittent fasting? We kind of went over that. I have found that when I eat protein, when I focus on protein and I cut out a lot of the sugar triggers, you know, things like um, carbs, the rice, the beans, that sort of thing, I just feel better. I feel more energetic. And as a matter of fact, this morning, I kind of made the personal decision that I was going to select a month and go completely carnivore for that month just to see what would happen. I'm not going to do it now because my tomato plants are filled with cherry tomatoes and regular tomatoes and tomatoes are just heaven to me. I don't have a problem with nightshades. So I'm clearly not going to do it now because I want to take advantage of the harvest. I've got cucumbers coming in and I've got a ton of tomatoes. So I will do it probably in July or August when my garden is kind of petered out because it's just too hot here in Florida in those months for things to survive. So I'll probably pick a month when I don't have a harvest coming in from my container garden on the patio. So that's just what I'm doing. But I can say getting the sugar out of my life, out of my life, getting the spike your blood sugar foods out of my life. I just feel so much better. And I know this for a fact because every now and then I'll have a treat. I had ice cream and I'll tell you what, I'm paying for it. Just I pay for it because I notice I get a headache. I get congested. My energy just bottoms out. So I have learned because my body is pretty clean right now that when I eat something that I used to think was fine, I didn't realize how it was affecting my body. I really do realize it now. So that's one of the beauties of really getting your, your diet and your life really clean is that you can see when you bring something in that's maybe not the best for you, what it really does for you. So what do you eat for dessert? I know you have stevia, a sweetener. You know what I recently found? Thank you for that question. Let's see, that's Colette. I have a wonderful dessert. I don't have it every single night. I used to, but I don't even crave it anymore. When I eat a lot of protein throughout the day, I'm good in the evenings. I just am good. I have my sleepy time drink and I'm done. But I do have a good dessert that is really easy and it's not filled with sugar. I'll do organic berries, mostly blueberries and blackberries. I either get them at the local farmer's market or I'll get the organic from the grocery store and I'll top them with this new thing that I found that I'm really over the moon about. It's called Cocoa Whip. And it's like Cool Whip without all the chemicals and crap. In it. It's made from coconut and it tastes delicious. So I'll do a little, I'll do a bowl of berries, sometimes little, sometimes big. If I'm hungry and I'm really in the mood and I'll top it with that cocoa whip, which tastes yummy. It tastes like Cool Whip without all the junk in it. 
And that is what I'll have for dessert in the evening. It's really yummy. Um, oh, good question, Louise. Okay, Louise asks, how did you find your holistic nutritionist? That's a really good question because I meant to address that today. I think it was on my list. I have my questions over here on this side. That's why I keep looking over there. That is interesting. I did not even think about contacting a nutritionist until my girlfriend, Lori, said that she was working with this um, group called Korea Health. Korea Health is Korea and Julia. They're two brilliantly beautiful, brilliantly wonderful nutritionists. And they have a, you know, they have a business where they work with people like me to figure out what's going on with your health. Why do you not feel good? Why do you have joint aches? Why are you not losing weight? Why are you not sleeping? Blah, 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 blah. I ended up doing blood work with Korea Health, very comprehensive blood work. And it was just done online. I don't know even where they're located. It's all online, Zoom calls, um, phone calls, that sort of thing. What happened after I did my blood work with Korea Health is I got contacted by Connie, who I work with now. The reason I ended up working more with Connie wasn't that Korea Health was an incredibly skilled. I believe they are. It's just that Connie's my age. And Connie had gone through what I was going through. So when I went off on a tangent with Connie on the phone, poor woman, and she was just listening very patiently and kindly, she knew what I was talking about because she said, you know, I know I've been there. And Korea Health, they're just younger women. They're fabulous. They're both a size two and beautiful. I mean, they're just living their best lives. These gals are great. But Connie was just a little bit more my age. I felt like she could relate a little bit more. And I felt like maybe she had bumped up against some of the challenges for older women that could be helpful for my journey. So that's, you know, that's how I did that. But if you're looking for someone to work with, you don't have to have someone in your neighborhood. Connie lives in California. I'm in Florida. I've never met her. We've talked on Zoom calls. We talk on the phone. It's just, she's seen my blood work. So the really important thing is looking under the hood of your body to getting the blood work done. I think that's probably the most important piece. Of course, seeing you on the Zoom call is helpful for them as well because they can kind of look at how your body looks, how your energy level appears, that sort of thing. So Find someone in your area, if that works for you, holistic nutritionist, you can just Google it. I did the same thing locally that um, I just am scheduling with a functional medicine doctor in my neighborhood, functional medicine doctor. That's the type of physician, and somebody can correct me over in the chat if I don't, if I misspeak, is they're really looking at how your body's functioning. It's not just to write a script for you, you know, fill you full of drugs and send you on your way. It's like the looking under the hood to find out what's going on with you. So with this functional medicine doctor, I simply just sent them my blood work that I'd already had done. So they have the information of under the hood of my particular body. So definitely you don't have to be in the same town. Just pick someone you feel comfortable with. I think that in at our age, looking on being able to look under the hood with the blood work is really important. I don't know how you can really determine what's going on without that. Maybe there are some doctors that can do that. So what kind of milk do you put in your coffee now? Oh, I already went over that. That is the nut pods right here. Um, let's see. I had a lot of people say, what thyroid support supplements are you taking? Because I spoke about it in the video. I said, I'm taking some supplements and I'm taking a tiny little medication. And I hesitated to show you what I'm using because I do feel like it's such a personal thing. And what I'm taking may not work for you. It could be exactly the wrong thing for you. You just don't know until you talk with someone who understands this kind of information. But I'm going to go ahead and just show you one of the brands I'm using. And I've used a few. So this is a recent acquisition for me. This is from Dr. Weston, Dr. Weston Childs. 
Dr. Weston Child. And I'm taking a couple of supplements from him. This is a T3 conversion booster, and this is essential T2. So Connie and I just looked at what this doctor had available and kind of said, well, again, back to pulling the levers. Let's try this and see how things go. Let's try this and see how things go. So can I say I'm going to stay on these? The answer is I don't know. We're going to have to see. We're just still just pulling levers to see what works for me. I can't, and in addition to that, I am taking a tiny medication. And a lot of you said, well, how are you on a medication if the, if the doctor you talked to said that your thyroid was just fine, which is what happened. I had two holistic nutritionists tell me that my thyroid was the problem. I had a medical doctor tell me my thyroid was just fine. So the question was, how did you get the medication? And I'm going to say I'm taking the fifth on that. <laughs> it's like when there's a will, there's a way. So that's my answer on that one. Um, let's see, HRT. I had some people ask me about hormone replacement therapy. Now, I was on hormone replacement therapy after menopause when I was in my 50s, and I loved it. Love, love, loved it. I felt so good on it. I loved it. But for one reason or another, partially because I was traveling out of the country, partially because the provider, the gal that I was working with um, closed her business, I just fell away from it. And I didn't get back into taking HRT. When I was talking to the, the patient liaison yesterday from the functional medicine doctor's office, she said, are you on HRT? And I said, no, I had a great experience when I was younger, but maybe I'm too old now. You know, I'm 66. And she goes, we have patients in their 80s on HRT. And I said, okay, sign me up. You know, I, I'm more than open to getting back on HRT because it was such a wonderful improvement in my energy and my health when I was in my fifties, I'm a little older now. We'll see what the doctor has to say. So my experience with HRT was all good. I went to a compounding pharmacy and I got my um, hormone replacements from them. I really liked it. The whole thing was, you know, it's a very, um, I, I just liked the whole thing about it. Okay. Um, Joe. Hi, Joe. I always love hearing from you, Joe Vickers. Your skin is always beautiful, but it looks even more amazing. You know, it's probably the lighting. You know, trust me, if you met me in person, you would see all my little, you know, doodads and this sort of thing. But thank you, Joe. I really appreciate that. There, It is a tribute to good skincare. My skin looks so much better now than it did three years ago. And I was really comparing the journey, the skincare journey that I went on to the fitness journey or the health journey that I'm on now. And I was thinking about it this morning while I was having my coffee. And I think this skincare is a lot easier. <laughs> it really is. When I look at skincare now, skincare seems so easy to me. It's so easy to me. Honestly, I could sit someone down and give them step one through 10 and send them on their way. And they'd have everything that they needed to do in no time. It is a result of you know, kind of unlocking, they try to make it mysterious. A lot of these companies try to make it mysterious. Like you have to have this special wonder product that's going to do this thing. No, no. There are so many companies right now that make so many great products that are so affordable. It is so much easier now, ladies, than when we were younger. If all of this had been available now, that back then when we were younger, we'd all look like we we're 30 today. <laughs> but at least we can take advantage of it now. But the skincare seems easier to me because it's less of a mystery because of our bodies are just so confused with the toxic environment and all that stuff that it's just a little bit more difficult. Okay, let's see. Um, oh no, Cole, it's not 10 steps. It's just 10 things that you want to do. It, it would be very easy. Um, let's see one more. I think I have one more question. Oh, I have one more question. And then I want to talk to you guys, um, about what I would tell my younger self. And this is important for anyone who's not 66 or if you are 66, this question was what exercises are you doing at the gym 
And, you know, how is that impacting your health? What I am doing at the gym is lifting heavy stuff. I'm not kidding you. I am lifting heavy stuff. My goal when I go to the gym is to lift as heavy as I can. And in addition, I am really working with compound exercises now. In other words, that's targeting more than one muscle group because I don't want to spend an hour and a half at the gym every day. I want to be out of there in 45 minutes to 45 to 50 minutes lifting heavy. And why do I want to lift heavy? Because that's what builds muscle. And muscle is so wonderful on our bodies. It gives us shape. It gives us form. It helps us keep all our joints tight and together. It helps protect us if we were to fall. It is so important. And it gives us that beautiful look of a strong and healthy body. Now, I want to tell you a story, and it's a good one. Back when I was in my late 50s, like 58, 59, I was living at Lake Tahoe in California. I was a fanatical and still am a fanatical kayaker today. You guys saw my new kayak over in the corner. I was kayaking and hiking both almost every day. So I'd get up in the morning, 7 a.m. I'd be on the lake with my coffee. I'd paddle for a couple, three hours. And that is a good upper body workout. I'd come home, have a little bit of lunch, and then I would go hiking up the hill. That was my routine. I loved it, and it felt great. That winter, I had a fall. It was late at night. I was leaving a holiday party. I was walking out to my vehicle, and as I was turning around to the side of my vehicle that was away from the street, I hit the ice. My feet went straight up, and I fell right on my side. Now, luckily, I did not hit my head, and I was going full blast. I did not hit my head because had I hit my head and knocked myself out, they wouldn't have found me for the next until the next day. I mean, I would have spent the night out there. Who knows if I would have survived? It was the middle of winter. It was snowy. What happened? I landed on the entire side of my body, my shoulder, my hip, all the way down. I got up and got in my truck and drove home. Why? Because I had such enormous muscle mass on my body, enormous for me, that all I did was bounce. I did not hurt anything. I did not bruise, nothing. I was not even sore the next day. And I'm telling you what, my feet went out from under me and I slammed down on the asphalt like, whoa. And I got up and got home and drove home. It was that muscle mass. If I did that today, I would probably injure something because I'm not as strong as I was back then. And you guys know, if you watch my channel and you're familiar with me, I am not into regrets at all. Such a waste of time. No, This is a no regret zone. But if I had one thing I could have told my 50-something year old self is keep training, keep lifting keep kayaking, keep hiking, keep that muscle mass going. Because what happened just through change in circumstances, and I ended up traveling out of the country for over a year, and where I was living in this and that, I didn't keep up with my physical fitness level. And that was the worst time for me to quit. The absolute worst time for me to quit because that is when we are dropping muscle mass just because of our age, kind of like we drop collagen like crazy. And not only did I stop working out, but that loss of muscle mass that my body clicked into, my muscle mass is so much smaller now than it used to be. And it's going to take so much more for me to get it back, but I'm determined I'm going to do it and I will do it. However, it would be so much easier if I had never quit. And I would tell my 50-something self that today. And what I want to say to you is that if you're younger than me, if you're younger than 66, either keep weight training or start weight training. Because you know what? That is going to be one of the most important things that you can do to keep yourself fit and happy and healthy and feeling great as you grow older. And if you're my age or older, 
Start today if you haven't already started because you will never be younger than you are today. And that weight training, that lifting heavy stuff is what keeps your bones dense, is what keeps all your joints intact and what keeps you feeling fit and healthy. And I believe because we know so much more about the body right now, because we have to, we will turn into an older generation that is incredible because we're strong, we're lean, and we're aware. And that's very, very exciting for me. So that's my, what I would tell my 58, 59 year old self is don't stop. And I wish I hadn't, but I did. And now what am I going to do? I'm going to get it all back in spades. And I'm excited about that. And I do have goals, which I'm not going to share, but when I reach them, I'll let you know that I'm there. Okay. I think that's it for today. Bobby, um, collagen will break your fast. Yeah. I guess if that's what it was doing for me. I mean, I think everybody's got a different opinion about that, but for me, it was working. And that goes back to what Connie says, you got to pull levers and every client she has, it's just a little different. You know, you pull a lever and you see what that does and you pull another lever. So the things that I want to leave you with you guys are if you're feeling stuck and you can't lose the weight and you don't seem like you're getting anywhere, it's not your fault. Don't fall for the blame and shame game. That's what the corporations want you to do. They want you to feel like you're a loser and you're slovingly and lazy when all the time they've been poisoning us with the terrible food and all the, you know, just the whole thing. It's all profit driven, has nothing to do with our good health. It's not your fault, but it is our responsibility to take charge, to start voting with our dollars. We're going to buy food from farmers who grow it without pesticides. We're going to get our meat from ranchers who don't pump their animals full of hormones. We've got to start taking back charge because we've let it go too long and they're taking advantage of us. So just know that there is help out there. It is our responsibility to take care of our bodies. It's more challenging today than ever. But you know what? We're going to do it. We're going to cl drink clean water. We're going to eat clean food. We're going to get the air cleaned up. It's all going to be good in the future. So that's what I have for you today. Again, not medical advice, just my opinions and my experience. I hope this was helpful. Again, if you have any more questions, um, I think Connie's in the chat and I think she's going to be in the comments below this video. She is much more learned on this topic than I am. And I'm sure that she's more than willing to help you out if you have a question. And I will continue to hit on this subject um, as I move forward, because it really is kind of like my passion. We've done the skincare. We know we can fix our skin. We know that. Let's see what happens when we start working at fixing a 60 something year old body. What happens with that? And what does that journey look like? I think that's fun and exciting. All right, everyone. Again, thank you so much for joining me. You guys know I love lives. If I could just do lives all the time, just a news channel, you know, kind of like what's new in the world twice a week. That would be fun for me. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. I'll be back this Sunday with a new video. I hope you tune in for that. And if you want to see the original video I did talking about my weight loss journey and why I was so dark, I'm frustrated. It's over on the channel. Um, I think the title is so frustrated, so it's easy to find. All right, everyone, take care. I am going to hang around here and have a fun rest of the day with the animals. Love y'all. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.